This is Twit. So what was the uh, what was the um, the feeling of the office hours crew? Oh, I think I think that I think a lot of people enjoyed it. I think that there's definitely uh, I think overall uh, there was a little bit of a yeah they caught up to some degree <laughs> uh, you know with things that were already out there, but also I think that Apple's uh, their approach to it, I think, is is definitely unique and very uniquely Apple, you know, in the sense that they basically created what we kind of thought of as three layers. You know, they have the you're going to ask you're going to do some things on your device, some things on the cloud, some things into the into the private cloud. And then for all the other things you still have access to right now, ChatGPT and eventually uh, Gemini and other things. But I do think that number one is that I think that Apple always looks at what will 90% of the population, 90% of their users do 90% of the time. And I think if you look at what is being produced by the device and the private cloud, it's probably a, between 70, 90% of what the average person wants to do with their phone uh, or with their device. And then they still have this kind of release valve and they can, and they have the freedom to keep on expanding, watching, you know, like expanding what people are doing on, uh, their devices and on their private cloud while still never having it not be able to scale up. Um, I think that the other thing is they're giving most of these tools or almost all these tools back to the developers. And so developers are going to be able to add this, you know, the, I think before they had to kind of figure out what it was going to do and how much it was going to cost and all those other things. And a lot of those things now are getting tied in to the, you know, ma being made available to the developers to to add to it. So I think that, I think we definitely saw a very, you know, a fairly unique way of approaching the problem um, that is, something that only Apple can do. Um, doesn't necessarily make it better or worse, just makes it an Apple version <laughs> of, of AI. Um, and so I think that that's, uh, but I think a lot of folks are pretty excited about it. Andy, what'd you think? Uh, I thought it was really, really great. Uh, the, when you, it's great that we're talking about this a day later, as opposed to the day of, because this is true of pretty much all Apple keynotes, but I think especially this one, after a day when like your first enthusiasm wears off, that's when you start looking at exactly what was shown off and you realize that, okay, they didn't show off a lot that was really new or really fresh. A lot of the most interesting stuff, like uh, the, uh, uh, the intelligence in Siri, they were really vague about exactly how this is going to work and when it's going to be released. So this was all like a lot of hypothetical stuff. But when you compare it to uh, Google I.O.'s uh, AI keynote last month, it's pretty much the same thing. Actually, almost late, almost uh, lasted exactly the same amount of time. I was surprised it lasted nearly two hours. But whereas Google was extremely hyped about talking about the basic technology and talking about the core research and talking about the layers that they were putting into this, Apple really wanted just to focus on here are some actual things that here, here are some demos of actual things our intelligence are going to do built into our actual products right now. And it doesn't really matter that they can't really that, that they that uh Maybe it's not quite so ambitious as far as what they can announce right now. It gives people a sense of comfort that, yeah, Apple does have a strategy. Yeah, there looks like they're not going to make the same mistakes that OpenAI and Google made, which are myriad and legendary. And it looks like they bought enough time to actually make these things happen. So I'm and, really, really very pleased with it. And and one of the things is that it while it, the keynote was very cursatory. I definitely encourage people to look to look at the uh, state of the union was much deeper <laughs> than what Apple was doing. Yeah, yeah, me you know, too. So that it was a much deeper deep dive. It's not like oh, we just kind of added. Ch I think that there was this little bit of like the kind of uninformed press was saying, well, they've incorporated Chat GPT, and it was kind of right, like, exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah, like I a mean, little, it's a little deeper than that. You know, like they, yeah, uh, they're doing an enormous amount of work on the device, an enormous amount of work in the private cloud. And then they're basically a release valve is, oh, yeah, and you can have all these other things on the periphery if you want to be able to add them. And by the way, if you're a developer, you don't have to do anything other than turn, you know, open it up. If you're already using Apple's tools, it's very easy to add. Yeah, I mean, we're the, the State of the Union had a lot of really, it, it really did bring home the idea that, no, they didn't just say, okay, well, we entered into a desperation agreement with, with OpenAI to get basic text summaries and basic uh, rewrites uh, some somewhere on our device. No, when you look at uh, things like the private cloud compute, uh, which I'm sure we'll talk about in more depth later on, that's what, what they're talking about, how not only surprised me that it's going to be running on Apple's own silicon in the cloud, but also that 
uh, it was only about 10 or 15 minutes of the uh, of the State of the Union, but they're mentioning that, well, basically we started with like iOS slash X for the operating system that these servers are running, and we removed everything that we don't need, and not just to make it faster, more performative, but saying we even uh, removed from the operating system persistent storage, <laughs> because this is not this is supposed to not actually keep any any people's data. So we've removed anything that could actually make that happen. So this is it's it's great because if uh, in the next year. Uh, some naysayers are saying, oh, well, gosh, look at look at the chat GPT 12. Hey, look at Gemini 81. Look at what it can do. Apple really is has a long term plan. They're making uh, they're making a statement. They have a point of view about how they want to go about this. And so long as they stay focused on delivering actual appreciative tools that are better or as good as what we can actually see through a third party app on Gemini or OpenAI, they got time. They got time. Micah, you're nodding. Yeah, what with the last part there. I think uh simply the the most important aspect for me yesterday and we talked about this a lot during uh our coverage of the event um was the very clear and thoroughly thought out method by which Apple is introducing Apple intelligence and kind of setting the uh not just the groundwork for it but also kind of how its approach looks and how it differs I think from other approaches and the way that it was so clearly uh explained and you know we talk about the capabilities that it has, we talk about the architecture, and then we talk about the most important aspect for consumers, which is what can you actually do with it? And I just felt it was very considered and I really appreciated that aspect of it. I, I, I kind of felt comfortable because here's the thing. I There are a lot of people, a lot of my colleagues who feel a type of way about generative AI. And for the most part, I've existed outside of that. I. I understand the complaints about generative AI. I understand the worries and the concerns about how it's impacting uh, different folks. But I am also enamored of the things that I have been able to do with it. And so seeing a more considered approach from a company that I cover quite a bit, I liked that. I was I was happy that there was that uh, consideration that went in, went into it, and that it was clear that the company said we're not just going to give you this blank canvas. I think it was actually it was either Tim Cook or it was uh, Federighi who, in an interview, talked about not just giving the teenager the keys to the car. Um, that isn't what Apple wanted to do with with generative AI. Some very specific use cases, and uh, you know some very specific demos showing how it can be used in day-to-day -day life. I think that's good. Let me show uh, yeah. some outside opinions. During the event, you and I were watching Apple's stock go down, then up, <laughs> down, then up. It was down quite a bit. Uh, well, since then, it's gone up quite a bit. It is now $12 up. It was as low as 191 bucks yesterday. It's up to 205 bucks today. Uh, the market says... Yay! This is a this is a good thing. Elon Musk says, <laughs> if Apple integrates OI, AI, open AI at the OS level, then Apple devices will be banned in my companies. This is an unacceptable security violation, and visitors will have to check their Apple devices at the door, where they'll be stored in a Faraday cage. He's sounding nuts. I think it's yes. only a matter of time before he starts talking about sharks. <laughs> it's patently absurd that Apple is not smart enough to make their own AI yet is somehow capable of ensuring that open AI will protect your security and privacy. Apple has no clue what's actually going on once they hand your data over, over to open AI. They're selling you down the river. I should point out Elon has been in a feud with open AI. He funded it initially, but pulled out when he decided they weren't going in the right direction and it wouldn't let him run the show. Sam Altman was at the Apple event signaling uh, at least some support from open AI. And then there's this from Charlie Warzel. At the Atlantic, the iPhone is now an AI Trojan horse. Je now, I'm, that's not all bad. He says generative AI has become truly inescapable. I think that my takeaway, I mean, look, I kind of like AI. Um, I don't think generative AI, you know, AI chatbots is all that interesting. I was really glad Apple didn't show that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But there is a lot of things you can do with AI that are that's really cool. In fact, it's my opinion, Apple Sherlock AI. 
because AI now stands for Apple intelligence, not artificial <laughs> intelligence. And I think from a marketing point of view alone, Apple did exactly the right thing. They said, this is AI for, the, for as you guys have said, for the, for the real people, for the masses, doing stuff that real people like, really want to do. And, and I think that we have to remember that we were talking about this this morning in office hours, that, that uh, most people have not used any AI. So, you know, we talk about it and it feels like something like everybody's using it all the time. I have chat GPT open all the time. I'm using mid journey at least once a day. Like it, it seems like a, a, it's all around us. But if you look at the average person using their iPhone, they're, they're not using chat GPT. They're not using any of those things. So as you look at all the features that Apple's bringing to the device into the private cloud by itself, um, that's going to, that's going to become ubiquitous with using your computer, you know, and then you are going to very easily be able to jump over and get some, get more if you want to from chat GPT. So it really is for the Apple uh, consumer is going to introduce a lot of people to AI. And so, and, and a lot of their stuff that they do day to day is going to probably exist on their device or on the private cloud, the, the, memo, the gen mojis, the, the little images, the fun stuff that they're going to do, filling something in, doing some correction, you know, all of that stuff is going to be stuff that it that that is done very seamlessly for them. Um, and that's going to be their introduction. And again, because it's everywhere for developers, it it has kind of uh, commoditized the the service, you know, in a sense that a lot of people could say they were doing AI. Now most Apple developers could just at it. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I'm not sure you're right that most input. people haven't tried it. Uh, ChatGPT had 100 million monthly users uh, at its peak. So somebody's using it. I think certainly the yeah. public is very aware of AI. It's been widely reported. I mm -hmm. think probably most people have just tried it just to see what would happen. Right. Remember, Microsoft has it built into Windows, the biggest operating system in the world. And, uh, you know, it's it's kind of hard to get away from it, frankly, in yeah. Windows. So I think more yeah. people have tried it than you think, Alex. But I do think Apple is, is being fairly judicious. Tim Cook, in an interview uh, with the Washington Post, admitted uh, that AI is going to hallucinate. Uh, let me see if I can find the uh, the quote. What's your confidence? Yeah, it's like that might be three, where they four, talk yeah. about uh, giving the team the keys. This is uh, Josh Tyrangiel, who's an opinion columnist, writes about AI in the Washington Post. He says, what's your confidence that Apple intelligence will not hallucinate? Tim Cook says, it's not 100%, but I think we've done everything that we know to do, thinking, including thinking very deeply about the readiness of the technology in the areas that we're using it in. So I'm confident it will be very high quality. But I'd say, in all honesty, that's short of 100%. I would never claim it's 100%. So he's he's hedging a little bit, saying, yeah, yeah, you might get something weird. Uh, I think the biggest risk for... They're smart because they're not just kind of giving AI an open field that exactly. everybody can just try, you know, try stuff. But they didn't introduce a brand new app, Image Playground, yeah, which is, but, you know, you know, this is where Google has gotten in trouble. Stable Diffusion, MidJourney, even Microsoft Designer have gotten in trouble because their AI image generators have been used to generate images. You know, people say, oh, that's problematic. Apple's yeah, got an image do, generator. Well, but you notice that it's not, it. Uh, none of the demos that they gave showed it showing anything that was nearly uh, photorealistic it's yeah, all yeah. like just these playful images and only three styles uh animation illustration style or sketch so yeah they i think they're right now they're putting such strict guardrails on what this is used for and what they're willing to endorse <laughs> sending out in the world that was generated by image playgrounds that's that mostly the, hey how, hey make, make a cartoon make a pixar cartoon version of your mom the riding right. a horse that solves uh, one into, of the problems yeah. which is people taking uh, ai generated uh, deep fakes mm -hmm. and passing them off as real because it's not going to be to realism. have it right there too. But it doesn't yeah. solve the problem Google had where people said, show me some Supreme court justices and they were all black or show me some founding fathers and they were all black. Now I personally don't think that's a problem, but there are plenty of people who did and Google had to step back mm -hmm. and really retreat on its image generation. Uh, how, how long before iOS 18 comes out? And by the way, this will not come out with, iOS 18, right? We're going to have to wait. Yeah, not, right. It's not out with the betas yet at all. And when it does come out, I think it's based on the, the the words have been used, it seems like it will be in beta even when it's in public. Even first. after the iPhone comes yeah. out, it's, probably. I think, I think so. it's going to be later, this, the, much later this year. But how long? Before, it'll be seconds after it comes out before somebody types in, 
show me some Supreme Court justices, right? Well, or show I'm, me some I'm, founding fathers. I'm curious to see how I'm, they I'm sure block things out. Yeah. Are there going to be words I can't they, type in? Yeah. How much safety? Yet. And we know that safety does not work because all of these companies, not so much up at AI, but certainly Anthropic and Google have tried to be safe. And there's and always quote unquote jailbreak in jail takes place. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Apple, Apple red team the hell out of this before they let it go. And this is one of those things that if you, if you listen really closely, you was, you would maybe assume that this is coming in iOS 18 when it's first released, but the only time frame they ever gave for a lot of this stuff was sometime in the next year. So quote, they're not quote. even done probably so, red teaming it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a good demo, but they're not. Yeah, there, there's so much of that. Again, the things they learned from Google and OpenAI is that the more ambitious that you get, the more powerful a thing you tool you want to give to people, the more dangerous it's going to be in the hands of people who don't understand what it is or people who understand exactly what it is and want to use it to perform acts of extreme mischief. And they're again, they got time. So they're very, very willing to simply say, OK, we've got a great image generator. It really is just for making cartoons and illustrations. It's going to be for things like in notes, if you just draw like a rough sketch, you can have our image generator turn it to something that's a little bit more refined. Uh, all, really, the notes app has so much. I think we uh, should spend a, some time so on the notes cool app. That was yeah. really I mean, we'll, we'll get to it. A killer app. Like, huh? My goodness. Yeah. It reminded me of the Newton <laughs> and, and in good ways. Leo's not not, not an egg freckles way, but in a good way. You, but yeah, just you, a, uh, this is. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just uh, uh, not to not to jump uh, what we're going to be talking about, but I think it was pretty amazing how very quietly they slipped in. Oh, and if you want to, like, you don't have to just do handwriting to text. You can do just do handwriting to handwriting because that was we wild. will figure out what your handwriting looks yeah. like. So we'll do spell check and we will correct the spelling in your handwriting. If you want, if you want to use our uh, generative AI to like tighten something up, it will tighten it up in your handwriting because we will build a facsimile of your handwriting. That's the and if this were being done on uh, uh, with by Gemini, it would be a wonderful tech demo. It would be an amazing white paper, but oh my God, the internet would be absolutely choked to death with the, the congratulations. Now Google knows how to fake your signature everywhere. Uh, Apple really set up the stage very, very well by saying that here's what we, they talked about privacy and basically guardrails before they talked about anything else. And again, they're doing very, very simple things. They're showing exactly what this is being used for. Not now you can make a font out of your handwriting. It's no, here's a way that we can now have your natural handwriting be editable, cut and pasteable and more natural to work with if you like to work with handwriting. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. If you enjoyed this little snippet of our programming, make sure you check out the full Mac Break Weekly. The link is right down there. <laughs>